Today, I'm going to show you how I fixed my problem with the Rode Wireless Go microphone system. So stick around. How's it Japs and welcome back to the Burden Builds Garage. So as I said, I'm going to show you how I fixed the problem with my Rode Wireless Go microphone system and it, it took all of five seconds to fix. This is how you do it. You just chuck it in the bin and forget about it. Well, yeah, semi. Uh, truth be told, I do still use the system a little bit, but not as much as I thought I was going to use it. Reason being is it doesn't really perform as well as I thought it would. It's not as trustworthy, trustworthy as well I thought it would be. Um, now, uh, to be fair to Rode, this system does work. Uh, it's just, it's not a very stable system. You know, it needs real, real line of sight. Uh, if you're three, four meters away from uh, the, the receiver or the transmitter and you, you get in the way of the line of sight, it drops out. And to me, for the money you pay, it shouldn't be doing that. Um, although it is a relatively cheap wireless system, Rode is still a good company. Uh, and, and you just wouldn't expect that type of thing from them. But anyway, uh, so my way to get around that is, is that I wanted to use that system in the garage, yeah, so that I could freely move around and have, you know, relatively good audio. Uh, so what I've ended up doing is just hardwiring the microphone now into the camera, which is generally actually a better thing to do anyway. Um, so I won't be using that very much anymore. Uh, that said, uh, I'm using the VideoMic Pro Plus now. Uh, I have been for quite a while. And uh, I've got a little extension here. Not really little, it's 10 meters. Uh, that's what I made up. And that's what we're going to look at today is how to make that extension. Now, uh, you can buy a 6 meter 20 foot extension from Rode. It's the SC8. Uh, the cable that it comes with is... It's pretty much as thick as this, as thick as a toothpick, really. Uh, and for the price you pay, like 24 odd dollars, 345 Rand, you know, it's not worth You can make this cable a much higher quality cable for the same price. Well, that's as long as you can solder better than a two year old. So, uh, again, just to touch on a small problem when you buy these microphones, they generally mean to be mounted on cameras and they come with short little cables with uh, three and a half millimeter. Uh, TRS plugs, jack plugs on either side. Uh, they come in a straight arrangement and uh, also a coiled arrangement. Um, so they they are meant to be mounted on the camera, but sometimes you do want to use them on a boom or something like that, then you're going to need an extension. So uh, that road extension does work. It's very thin. It's quite easy for somebody to pick that up on their shoe and like it just has to get hooked and they pull it and the wires in there are, or the conductors are so thin they'll break for nothing. So uh, in our case, I can show you now how to make a high quality cable. Uh, so all that I did and all that you can do is, I mean, I, can, I went down to the local music store. You can order this cable mostly anywhere online, uh, but it was this coiled lot of cable, 10 meters of it, cost 220 Rand. Um, so somewhere in the region of like $15. Uh, and it's a high quality cable. And then I just bought two uh, TRS uh, Neutrik plugs, so good quality plugs. And we're going to use those and make our own cable, which in the end is actually going to cost as much or the same as the Rode SC8. And as I said before, for a much higher quality cable. Okay, let's get into it. The cable we're going to use today is SC-THE Stage 22 Half Flex Oxygen Free Cable OFC. It's uh, got two by 0.22 millimeter squared conductors or the American wire gauge 24. And it's by Summer, which is a German cable company. Very good cable. This um, nice and soft and flexible as well. So uh, that compared to the conductors that would be in something like these road cables, uh, you you can't compare the two. This, this is just going to be really, really thin. So for this 10 meters of cable, it was only 220 Rand. So remember, the 6 meter road cable was 345 Rand. So we're sitting at 220 Rand for something that is 4 meters longer. The next thing is actually the quality of plugs that you use. So uh, road, I mean, th these are these are just you know pre-made at the factory. Um, they're just going to be cast in one connection. Um, I'm not really explaining it very well there, but uh, tough shit. So what we're going to be wanting to use are good connectors. Now you get cheap 
uh, connectors that are, are made in, in greater parts of the of the world. Um, but these connectors, Neutrik, they are a very good company. Uh, I think they are a Liechtenstein company. That's where they're made. Uh, you also get Amphenol, uh, but I prefer to use Neutrik when we can. These connectors were 65 Rand each. So we're looking at 130 Rand for this and 220 Rand for that. So 350 Rand for all of the raw materials that we need uh, versus, oh, that's for a 10 meter cable, versus 345 Rand, so five Rand less, for a six meter road cable. Now, this cable that we're gonna make is gonna be a far higher quality than the road cable that you're gonna buy. Uh, although it's gonna require a little bit of skill if you can solder, uh, I'm not talking about soldering like a two-year-old, uh, but if you're semi-decent at soldering, then this is the way to go. So just like the road connectors are 90 degrees, I've bought the 90 degree Neutrik connectors and uh, they're quite nice, uh, nicely packaged, should I say. And uh, they give you instructions on the packaging. So to strip back the outer sheath of the cable that you've, that you've, that you've bought uh, by nine millimeters or 0 0.354 inches. Uh, and then the screening, that's uh, this little bit inside. We'll have a look at that just now. That's four millimeters, you strip that back. And then the actual uh, signal wires, there's two of those. You'll strip those back three millimeters or 0 0.118 inches. Uh, also gives you some idea of how the crimping mechanism works or the, the cable relief, the strain relief for the cable. Uh, very nice, very nice. First thing to do is to just take the plug and all of its bits and pieces out of its plastic. And uh, I would say, uh, it's it's quite a quite a schoolboy era. Um, often, what might happen? Oh, I can see a problem here. Okay, problem averted. I actually realised as I was making the video that uh, the cable that I purchased, um, just the the outer diameter of it, is actually too big to go into the back of the TRS connectors that I purchased. So what we're going to end up doing is removing about 60 millimeters of the outer sheath. Uh, now this outer sheath is quite thick. Um, so once we remove that, then we're gonna slide over a new piece of uh, insulation. This is just a piece of heat shrink. Uh, that'll go directly over the, the inner wires um, or the shielding. And then once that small piece is done, then we are going to take a longer, thicker piece, and then we're gonna slide that over the whole lot um, so we end up with something looking like this and you can see there is a narrowing there and that narrowing actually allows the end of the connector to fit over the wire again. It's quite important when you are taking this outer sheath off uh, is to not actually damage or nick the, the shielding inside the cable. Uh, that's going to definitely cause a weakness in the little braids of cable and I mean th those cables are fairly thin so be really careful when you're doing that. Okay, there we go. So, the new outer layer is going on. And we're just going to use a bit of heat here. We'll just shrink it down to size. And once this uh, layer is done, then we'll put on the outer layer. What we can do is just slide on that outer layer so long. There we go. We'll pop that on. So this outer layer now should get down to a size that uh, the back of the connector, the TRS plug, that it can actually slide over. Now, it worked on the, the last cable, clearly, because it's lying on the table. So hopefully the same happens with this one. So there we go. Sliding on, no problem. Cool. Okay, now we need to uh, just modify this little plastic end a little bit um, to take on this cable. So what we ended up doing is uh, just hollowing out the strain relief a little adapter plastic piece thingy. Uh, reason being because the cable is quite a bit thicker than what it used to. So nothing too special, just took the craft knife and as you saw, carved it out. Okay, I did it once again, forgot to hit record, um, but all that we've done is just exposed the uh, shielding and the two signal wires. Uh, cut off, there was a little bit of string in here, that's a bit of strain relief for inside the cable, so we've cut that off, we don't need it. And uh, just before I realized there was a problem earlier on, I was actually going to say it's a schoolboy error, and I've almost, almost made it again. So this is the back 
part of the plug. Uh, there's supposed to be a little rubber end on here, and there it is. I almost forgot to put this on. So it is actually a very easy area to make. Um, uh, you know, it's gonna, it's, it's, it's not that it's unfixable, but it's just a really irritating thing to fix uh, if you've done a nice job of soldering everything together. So just having to pull that off. There we go, back to where I started. We also just want to have a quick measure just to cut these signal wires down to the correct length um, and turn the ends of them so that uh, we can get it all soldered up. Okay, all done. Uh, now just having to put it together, screw it in and test the cable. Okay, both ends are now complete and uh, always a good idea to test it before you stick it into anything. So uh, you can see there's the continuity and the shielding goes to the shielding and it also go, it doesn't go to the ring or tip. Same on this side. It doesn't go to the tip or the ring. And then if we check the ring and the ring, that's good. And the tip and the tip, that is good. So overall, cable is theoretically working. The last thing we really need to do is actually just to plug it into the cable and mic and check it out. So there we have it, chaps. Uh, the cable is made. And as you can see, it's not that technical to make. As long as you have some basic soldering skills and uh, you've got some basic technical knowledge and if you don't just check out a youtube video or two like this one uh, here's the cable you're listening to it right now so it's plugged into the microphone running all down the microphone stand plugging directly into the camera and if you didn't notice it it was actually already here in the intro sequence so i've, I've kind of shot this video a little bit out of sequence but nevertheless here's the cable it is working and uh, it's working fairly well Something that I didn't mention earlier is uh, the interference thing. Uh, with some of the cheaper cables that aren't properly shielded, uh, you can pick up sometimes electrical interference. Uh, this is a high quality cable, so you're generally not gonna pick that up. And I'm hoping that it's not picking up any interference at the moment. No, well, at least my ears can't hear anything here in the garage. <laughs> um, Chaps, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, uh, put them in the comments section below. Give it a thumbs up if you liked the video. Uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. It really does help me out. And uh, yeah, I guess all that is left to say is we'll see you next time. Cheers.